So after yet another hard day at work, there I was relaxing in the bath when a thought struck me. Big Dave, you know a surprising amount about fantasy novels. Why not do a video about which ones you'd like to see become a TV series? Now that's not the kind of thing I usually think about when I'm in the bath. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, not that last one. <clears throat> so, after a minute or two to think about the idea, I said aloud, Yeah, I'll do it. To which Mrs. Big Dave replied, Fucking shut up! So after my lengthy apology, I got to work on this video. The three fantasy series I'd like to see given the House of the Dragon Game of Thrones treatment. I hope you enjoy. Oh, and uh, sorry if any of you are picturing me in the bath. Yeah, it's not pleasant. My first choice of fantasy books I'd like to see become a TV series is the First Law series by Joe Abercrombie. What can I say about these books other than if you haven't read them, go and bloody do it now. Right now. Unlike my next two picks, which are very much high fantasy, I'd class Joe's series as low fantasy. There's a crap ton of books, starting with an initial trilogy, then some standalone novels, and finally the Age of Madness trilogy. I mean, all the authors in my list managed to bang out book after book. Why is it so bloody difficult, George? Anyway. The first law contains a couple of my favourite fantasy characters, namely Logan Ninefingers and Sandan Glockner. Logan Ninefingers is that mate we've all got, and when he loses it goes absolutely fucking mental until there's no one left standing in the pub but him. Let me quote the man himself so you get an idea. I fought in three campaigns he began, in seven pitched battles, in countless raids and skirmishes and desperate defences and bloody actions of every kind. I fought in the driving snow, the blasting wind, the middle of the night. I've been fighting all my life, one enemy or another, one friend or another, I've known little else. I've seen men killed for a word, for a look, for nothing at all. A woman tried to stab me once for killing her husband and I threw her down a well. And that's far from the worst of it. Life used to be cheap as dirt to me. Cheaper. I mean, come on, folks, that's right and right there if ever I've read it. And Sandan Glockter is just as interesting. Imagine a bloke that got the Theon Greyjoy treatment. A completely broken man physically, but with a sharp, bitter mind and maybe just a hint of decency still alive, deep down in him. And you've got Sandan Glockter. And again, here's a quote from him so you get the idea. You are aware, I suppose, that I lived through two years of torture, two years in hell, so I stand before you now, or lean before you, twisted as an old tree root. A crippled, shambling, wretched mockery of a man, huh, Lord Hoff? Let's be honest with one another. Sometimes I lose control of my own leg, my own eyes, my own face. He snorted, if you could call it a face. My bowels too are rebellious. I often wake up dobbed in my own shit. I find myself in constant pain and the memories of everything that I have lost nag at me endlessly. He felt his left eye twitching, let it twitch. So you can see how, despite my constant efforts to be a man of sunny temper, I find that I despise the world and everything in it and myself most of all, a regrettable state of affairs for which there is no remedy. And that's just two characters. There are many, many more cracky characters throughout these books. I'd absolutely love this series to come out on TV. The characters are incredible and there's genuine comedy running throughout the books, despite them being very dark in places. Right, before my next book, I'd just like to take a quick moment to ask you to be a diamond and subscribe to the channel. We're very new, so if by some miracle we make it big, you'll be able to boast to all your mates that you were one of the original subscribers. Win-win for us all. Now the next book I'd like to see become a TV series you've probably never heard of as it's by a fairly unknown author called James Barkley and his series The Chronicles of the Raven. Now the best way I can describe this series is imagine playing Dungeons and Dragons Nerd! and by some miracle you and your numpty mates have come up with an absolutely cracking set of characters and your dungeon master's knocked it out of the park with a brilliant campaign. So anyways, the Raven are a band of mercenaries that have been together for about 10 years by the point in time that the book starts. They're known far and wide as the best of the best and can demand a high price for their services. The series sees them go on a number of adventures you'd expect for this type of high fantasy, but it doesn't really matter what they're doing because it's all about the characters and that's what I really loved about this series. Now I won't go into all of them, but a couple of the key characters are Hirad Coldheart. who starts out as a mean, fairly stupid barbarian but goes on a journey throughout the books to become a lad that would do anything for his mates. And in this day and age, we could all use one of them. Then there's the unknown warrior. He's the leader of the bunch and has an interesting backstory relating to a group of telepathic super soldiers types that he somehow managed to escape from. And I always pictured him looking like Dolph Lundgren. Don't know why. Now, the reasons I'd like to see the Raven on the TV screens are firstly that I think it translates to the telly pretty easily. 
The books don't have a huge cast of characters and multiple intertwining plots. They're more your hack and slash adventure, but with a group of characters you should quickly start to care for. Which leads me into my second reason. As you'll probably like the characters, things get really intense really quickly as James Barkley has a habit of killing off his main characters at a rate that would make George R.R. R. Martin's train conductor hat fall off. Thirdly, there's seven books in the series, so plenty of source material for show writers to get their hands on. And lastly, a mate of mine was at a party with the author James Barkley and mentioned to him that his mate Big Dave had read his books, so James gave him some signed copies just for me. Top lad, eh? So lastly, it's the Thomas Covenant series. This one should be fairly well known as it was a pretty big hit back when it was published in the late 70s and over the following years as more books followed. The Chronicles of Thomas Covenant are a three book series written by Stephen R. Donaldson about the life and travels of his protagonist, Thomas Covenant. These were followed by a second set of three books, imaginatively called The Second Chronicles of Thomas Covenant, and finally by a four book series called The Last Chronicles of Thomas Covenant. So 10 books in all, and all of them are on the big side. Anyways, Thomas Covenant is an author living in America who's, shall we say, a little down on his luck. He's gone and caught leprosy. Well, at least it wasn't COVID, eh? And his missus has done a runner because, you know, leprosy. Just as he's thinking about ending it all, he has an accident and wakes up in a stunningly beautiful new land called, uh, The Land. Yeah, Stephen kept the naming convention simple. In many ways, it's the land itself that really captivated me as a reader. The land is epic and beautiful and creates a stunning backdrop for the various stories that Donaldson tells. The people of the land have inherent abilities that we might call magic and live harmoniously with their environment. The descriptions of the places covered in visits and the various races that inhabit this mysterious world are absolutely brilliant. But it's not all hippy dippy crap as there is a baddie called um, Lord Foul the Despiser who is sort of an evil god imprisoned in the land so obviously wants to destroy it so he can escape. Now I won't go into too much more detail as I really recommend you lot read this one but each set of chronicles has a vastly different feel as a huge amount of time passes in the land between each one. I think I've read all 10 books at least three times and let me tell you, that's a lot of toilet breaks. Now there is a whopping great big elephant in the room regarding this one making it to the big screen. Namely that our boy Thomas, how shall I say, does a very bad thing to an innocent girl against her will, pretty much as soon as he arrives in the land. Now there are some mitigating factors but in today's climate I can't see them having their supposed hero doing that. The problem is though that this awful act is intrinsic to both the story and Thomas Covenant's character arc pretty much for the entire 10 books. So I'm not sure if it would be the same without it. Anyway, that's something to be aware of. So to sum up, I guess it's fair to say I'm a bit of a fantasy nut. I'd read the story of Ice and Fire books long before the average person knew their Starks from their Lannisters. And the three series I've listed here left just as much of an impression on me as those books did. And I would say of the three series listed, it's the Joe Abercrombie series that has the best chance of making it onto TV. So for now, I'll wait for HBO to get their act together and commission these books into TV series that I can turn into lovely content for my channel. And in the meantime, why don't you lot go and read them all, then post in my comments whether you agree with me or not. Right, I'm off for another bath. Blah, 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 blah. Nice. Bloody hell, you made it to the end of the show. Well done you. Now, if you could be a diamond and subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell, that will make sure we can keep in touch in future. Please also drop a like on the video and maybe even comment below. A bit of banter is always welcome. I'd like to wish you all the best. Until next time.